Hey guys. How are you doing everyone? Today we're going to be looking at the Sontronics Podcast Pro. They've recently released some rainbow editions and as you can see we've gone for the purple and green. Sontronics are a British company. They are not new to making microphones. They've made a wide range, actually, over the years. These are their entry-level model. These were designed with what well, they call the Podcast Pro, so podcasters, definitely, but also gamers and streamers. And we'll be looking at it from the perspective of streamers, predominantly. That's right, yeah. Although we did pick these mics up as mobile mics for sort of thrown in a bag and taken on the go. So yeah, let's have a look. If you just want to hear what the mic sounds like, I'll be doing an extract reading and an example of us using the mics while streaming later on in the video and I've put timestamps in the description below so feel free to skip to that. Otherwise, if you want to hear the full review, I hope you enjoy the video. So as you can see, it's really quite basic packaging. On the box, there were very clear instructions. It explains that it's no phantom power since these are dynamics. It is possible to use these without an XLR interface. You can use an XLR to USB. Plug them straight into your computer. The other thing that needs to be mentioned, you'll notice that the grill is on the end. So these are end addressable microphones. I don't know if the camera can see that very clearly, but there's actually a pop shield underneath the grill. Now the grill itself does have a little bit of give. Like if you press it, you can feel it flex a tiny bit, but it does feel quite sturdy in my opinion. I mean, it's just full metal casing as you can see, and that is really quite solid. Yeah, agreed. Um, and this entire uh, yoke mount here as well, this is all metal as well so and these go quite tight on the side as well so but you can loosen them up as well if you need to change the angle of them at all like mm -hmm. this yeah so yeah very good so it comes in about 313 grams so as far as microphones go there's no doubt this is on the lighter end for sure and in fact that's one of the things that kind of drew us to them in the first place because as we briefly mentioned earlier we did intend to use these as mobile mics to take out and about so that's going to make carrying them so much easier especially with there being two of us that's right yeah and i mean some of the other mics out on the market take the pod mic for example i mean that's about a kilogram so if you want to carry a few of those in your bag then you're probably gonna get some good weight training in there <laughs> Now, I love the form factor of this. It's, it's in that category of very small mics as well, without going to your drum mics, for example. Dimensions wise, it's about 13 centimeters long, by six centimeters wide. That's quite a wide microphone. The only thing I would say with it being 60 wide, if you were looking to put a windscreen on this, you'd need to get a larger one. I've used the WS2 by Rode. I did have to push it on a little bit, but it, was, it fit on mm -hmm. easily, yeah, I would say. We've been using this quite a bit while streaming and gaming and having such a small form factor, I find that so convenient because before then we were using the Shaw SM7Bs and quite recently the Aston Stealth, which are both relatively long microphones. That is so much shorter. And to have that in front of your face between your monitor while you're gaming is really convenient. Mm, yeah, I, I'll agree with that, yeah. Another important factor is the fact that these are super cardioid. Due to the foam around the entire microphone, these do have excellent side rejection. Mm -hmm. Some of the best, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And we'll do a quick test now. So you guys at home can also hear what it sounds like with the side rejection and coloration.
So in the interest of completeness, we'll do a quick resonance frequency test. Now I am using a desk stand and boom pole for this. Normally while I'm streaming, I would probably use an actual boom arm because it tends to keep the mic out of the way and you're not likely going to touch it, so it's not really a problem. Unfortunately, it is pretty bad at rejecting those sounds so just make sure you don't handle this mic it's not a stage mic it's not designed to be handed around <laughs> so yeah just just keep it on a stand uh, out of the way where you're not going to accidentally tap it I'd say. Another really interesting aspect of the design of these mics they've been naturally EQ'd such that it sort of rolls off the more sibilant frequencies but gently mm -hmm. there's a brilliant interview online actually and we'll link it in the description below it's an interview with trevor coley the ceo of sontronics and he's talking about the thought process that went into designing the podcast pro and he explained that growing up when he worked as a sound engineer how people would tend to record with different guitars and then EQ it to sound how they wanted it to sound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he thought, well, if you want a certain sound, then surely you ought to have a microphone that sounds that way in the first place rather than a different microphone and then EQing it to have it sound like that. So the idea is really you can buy it, plug it in, and you should only need to do minimal EQ, if any at all, and you'll get a professional sound out of it straight away. One thing I really like is to an extent they've kind of gone against the grain a little bit because they've been a bit innovative there. If you look at some of the other microphones on the market, especially a lot of modern microphones, they tend to be brighter. Yeah. And that that's great, you know, bright microphones do sound good, but not everybody has a preference towards bright microphones. So but one thing I have to stress, oftentimes you want the brightness in the voice because it helps to cut through other sounds that you may have going on. If you've got like a song in the background or while we're gaming, for example, the game sounds, you want it to be more forward. Yeah, and we've done quite a bit of streaming with these mics recently and the voices have had no problem cutting through. Me personally, I've got quite a sibilant voice and it is quite high register. So I find they suit my voice style really, really well. I'll do some extract reading so you can get a sound for it yourself. Evan Smoke used to be known as Orphan X, a figure as elusive as a rumour, until he came to the rescue of those who most desperately needed his help. The kind of help no one else could provide, the kind that caused concern in the corridors of power. As a boy, he had been plucked from the foster home and trained as an off-the-books assassin inside a top-secret US government program, which is why, even forced into early retirement, he dare not trust a phone call, nor the caller claiming to be his mother asking him to protect a complete stranger who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. None of it stacks up, yet it bears the telltale signs of the secret world that made him and from inside it, a deadly new threat to the nation's security. But this time, the danger is more personal than he could ever have imagined, because blood runs deep. Now I'm testing the proximity effect with the pop filter on. Personally, I think it gives it a really full voice. And again, with a pop filter and its built-in pop filter, it doesn't have any problems, even at just an inch away from my mic. This is the proximity effect, about an inch away from the mic, talking directly into the microphone without any kind of windscreen. So as you can hear, unfortunately, there is a lot of plosives. It doesn't really like those breathy sounds either. It does pick up a lot of that breathing. So probably best to stay back a little bit. You don't want to go too far back either, though. This is about five to seven inches away from the microphone. And it does start to lose that fullness. It starts to sound a little bit hollow, a little bit weaker. So I think about three inches is the sweet spot. 
But one last thing that I want to quickly mention, these have been designed and they are fairly high sensitive for dynamics. Now we usually try to stage gain to about minus 18 dbfs and then we'll boost in post afterwards and to reach that level we usually use about 40 db of gain which is not that much more than we were using when we were using condensers, condensers and so, usually dynamics need very good preamps or a cloud lifter to get to the gain that they need so yeah that's right yeah so that's not going to be an issue with these not at all you can pretty much use any kind of interface uh, you don't need top quality preamps in order to run them which is again very accessible to the masses so uh final thoughts <laughs> i love the color i know it's such a girly thing to say <laughs> but you don't get many mics that are bold enough to step outside the comfort zone of your plain black and silver mics really that's true. If you look at similar competition, a lot of the other mics, they look a lot more like standard broadcast mics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought personally it had a really, really interesting form factor being as short so as it short, was. yeah. Because when you're up against a computer and you're talking, say you're using it for streaming, you know, that actually space requirements might matter. Certainly, yeah. Especially when the alternatives might be getting a much larger microphone. And yeah, I mean, in terms of price on these mics, they come in at around £99 at the current time of this video. They haven't actually changed the price depending on which colour you get either. Just because it's a special colour doesn't mean they're going to charge you more than if you go for the plain black, which is nice. Yeah, I, I agree. I was pleased to see that. The other thing as well, they'll also offer you a lifetime warranty on these. Considering the price, that's amazing they include lifetime warranty. Agreed. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the review. But if you do like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button and give us a like. And we'll see you guys again soon. See you again, guys. What? Nice try, mate. The guy managed to just run in then and he got a bit unlucky because... I ran right up to the bomb at the same second that he did. I knew there was a guy in a crate then because I saw him coming through the... Like, it was, it glitched out and showed him through the corrugated iron. So I just opened the door and shot him. There's one on the roof. Didn't want to go into that because I think there was a claymore in it and it looked like it. I'm going to try and yellow it up the ladder. Do it. I've got him.